Okay, project time. Here's an old hard drive with uh, some platters in it, I hope. This is a geared motor. It has a DC motor here, but there's a gearing box which uh, drops it down to 5 RPM when you supply it with 12 volts. And for this project, uh, 5 RPM might be too fast, so this is a uh, motor control. Let's uh, build a semiconductor lapping machine with these bits. Uh, so before we get too far into this video, I suspect a number of people are wondering what the heck I'm trying to build. Uh, kind of a quixotic pursuit. Uh, this is a semiconductor that I have lapped down uh, by hand, and it has uh, showing all the layers of semiconductor. Basically, there's metal on the bare outside, um, then there's the uh, polysilicon, and then, of course, the bulk silicon below. And uh, if you de-layer a chip uh, layer by layer, you can actually then do some reverse engineering on it. The layer is, of course, very thin, uh, microns thick uh, or less. So uh, basically what I want to do is create a machine which allows me to take these layers down. What you're looking at here is, of course, a lens successful example because the layers, of course, are all uh, been taken down at a different rate. So here's the drive all stripped down of its electronics. Uh, the reason, of course, I'm starting here is I think the platters will be very flat, and, uh, of course, that's exactly what I need for this particular uh, function. So now I need to drive these platters. Uh, the hard disk, of course, has a motor, but it's designed to spin far too quickly. So I took the uh, hard drive over to my... Uh, drill press and I drilled through it with a two millimeter drill bit. I uh, then went up for my chop saw and I chopped off a chunk of cylindrical brass stock and went to my lathe and uh, turned it down to a nice precise cylinder. And uh, from here of course now I can create the drive shaft and it's just simply a two millimeter uh, drill bit. All right so from here of course now I've got basically a platter I can drive. Okay here's the assembly. Uh, obviously the hard drive is mounted onto this sheet of aluminum. We have the gear motor mounted onto it, sheet of aluminum. We, of course, have that drill bit now essentially performing an axle. It's a very rigid structure, and of course, that's what I'm going for. And of course, with this brass piece here, now it's sticking up quite a bit higher than you might expect it needs to be, and I'll explain that in a second. But uh, the reason this is all we're going to work here is I'll just uh, zoom into it and uh, show you how it rotates. So, the idea of a lapping machine is there's going to be some grit here, and it's, of course, going to uh, abrade away whatever's sitting on the platter. And the platter, of course, spins, uh, but this spins much faster than the uh, inside here, so you can't just put the sample here. It will happen as it'll braid off too earlier. Uh, what you need is some sort of circular thing so as this uh, rotates it causes the cylinder to rotate as well and then the sample will be in it. So I went back to my uh, chop saw and I cut a piece of uh, 5 8 inch circular uh, bar stock and uh, here it is of course and then I took a uh, plumbing fitting and I wrapped it with some hockey tape and uh, from that I create a, a sample holder. The idea being that the uh, semiconductor will sit here and then the machine is going to rotate it. Uh, that's what the tape's acting like a friction element. The reason I'm trying to separate these two things is I'm trying to get the cylinder so it uh, doesn't get the power transmission directly from the drive shaft. So here it is in operation. Obviously, uh, as the CD platters rotate one way, the uh, cylinder which holds the die below it rotates the other, which in theory should cause a fairly even wear pattern on the bottom die. Uh, so the only other thing of note here is, of course, there's some blue paste uh, on this uh, movie. Uh, that blue paste is a uh, diamond lapping paste. It's basically diamonds in uh, some sort of uh, oil, some sort of silicone. Uh, and of course that's what's used to braid the surface of the uh, silicon die. So here's a sample holder with a semiconductor glued on. I used a super glue because you can uh, put a little dot there and then sort of smooth the die around it and create a really flat die by doing that. So the first run here is fairly promising. You can see it's of course uh, polished away one corner of the die. That means probably the sample holder is crooked. So uh, I went back to my uh, lapping table and I uh, smoothed it off until it uh, was uh, fairly true. Uh, I went back and put another piece of silicon on. So here it is looking quite a bit better. It's now, of course, uh, equally uh, ground away on the corners. You can see, of course, oh, the center hasn't been touched. So uh, either the die is concave or uh, the sample holder, I suspect, more likely is sort of toppling around. It's basically uh, rotating on the edges, uh, giving favor to that. So. Uh, obviously not quite where I want to be with this machine, so um, let's try a different technique. So if this is wobbling around, what I thought I'd do is uh, change the sample holder. I went to a brass stock, a little bit heavier, so hopefully that would uh, make the wobbling less. Uh, and then I've, of course, uh, drilled a hole in it, and I have some brass rod here, and it's uh, a friction fit very close. And uh, you can see I've uh, surface finished it fairly rough, so rather than having the hockey tape, which maybe is introducing some variation, I just left the, the brass fairly rough. And the idea here, of course, this would constrain the sample holder not to wobble. Uh, then went over to the machine here, and you can see I've uh, affixed the beam there as going straight down. 
Uh, now, I'd love to say that this, of course, solved the problem, uh, but uh, it didn't. Uh, it wasn't actually dramatically better. So, uh, whatever I'm doing here to hold the sample absolutely planar uh, isn't adequate, so I'm going to have to study the uh, machines that are commercially available a little bit more.